Everything we've talked about up until this point has to do with clients attempting to get into our environment. But an RS server can be used also to get clients out of the environment as well. And when it does so, to do so with some protections that may protect the return IP address of that client from being directly accessed. One way in which you can accomplish that is by implementing network address translation for the traffic that's attempting to exit your environment. Now again, this has nothing to do with clients that are out in the outside world. This is when you have a client inside your environment on the private network that needs to get out to the outside world and interact with other people, but do so with a different IP address. Implementing network address translation is something that happens down here under IPv4, where if you right click on general, you can add a new routing protocol, which is in fact the NAT routing protocol. Let me click OK here to add that NAT routing protocol. And then once I've done that, I need to enter in the two interfaces, the inside and the outside interface, that will link together for the purposes of this NAT translation. The first thing I'll do here is right click to choose a new interface, which will be my server net interface here. So all the machines here on the server net, once I've configured them, will be set up as the private interface that's connected here into the private network. This is the first step in configuring this NAT translation from the inside to the outside. Let me choose OK here to configure that half, and then come back down here under NAT, right click again and choose a new interface once again, which in this case will be our extranet interface. If I choose the extranet interface here, I obviously have to choose then this as the public interface that's connected to the internet. And it's here where I can go about actually enabling NAT on this interface. Now recall that the machines inside are going to need to access other computers out in the rest of the world. And what NAT does is provide a list of external addresses, those that are given to you probably by your provider, that then those external people can use for connecting back into internal resources. When I do configure NAT, when I turn it on for an interface, I need to identify what that address pool would be. This pool is most typically provided for you, as you can see here, by your internet service provider, and would be just a list of generally consecutive addresses with a subnet mask that's associated with them. When you add in this list of addresses here into create your address pool, you can also reserve those public addresses, uh, certain numbers of those, to be used for specific computers over in the private network. So if you know you have, for example, I don't know, an Exchange server that needs to use a specific public address, you can define what that Exchange server would be by choosing the Reservations button down here at the bottom. You can also tailor down exactly what you want this NAT translation to do by identifying the services and ports that will participate in NAT translation. Now, most commonly, when you're doing NAT translation, a lot of times you find yourself also doing a port address translation, or the specific ports that need to be accessed by resources out in the outside world. It is here in this list where we can define some existing services by port number, or we can create additional services uh, by name, by address, by protocol, and then by port incoming and outgoing that we want to set up for NAT translation. There are a variety of use cases that make sense for NAT translation. Most typically, anytime you have a server that sits on the inside that needs to be accessed by outside resources, but you just need some way to protect it. You further need some way to protect it down to the specific port that that server is listening on. So if this is Exchange and you have your SMTP ports, you would probably want to lock it down to just the SMTP port that's translated to some outside address. If it's a web server, you may want to lock it down to 80 or 443, those being the two web server addresses that you could use. But notwithstanding, this NAT translation here provides a mechanism for you to configure the appropriate access for those inside clients to have whatever necessary connection they need to the outside world.